What's up guys, it's Project. Shadow of the Earth Tree is finally out, introducing a plethora of new and fun weapons. So I'm going to help you get these weapons as fast as possible with routes to them, and I'm going a step further, putting 40 in every damage stat and testing each unique Ash of War on our troll friend here to give you a rough idea of how each weapon compares to one another, in case you're unsure of which weapon to go for. So welcome to the best OP early weapons video for Shadow of the Earth Tree. If this video gets 500 likes, I'm gonna put out my Bleed Claw build that is destroying the DLC early, so give the video a like and let's begin. I will provide links to the maps in the description, but Cyan Line equals you can safely pick the weapon up, Yellow Line means you have to fight a tough boss or invader to get it, and the Pink Line indicates you have to farm for it to get it. So make sure to equip the Silver Scarab Talisman for the fastest farm, pretty simple. First off, Backhand Blades are the easiest to get, from the very starting grace, head upward on the map to the three cross grace. Most routes will stem from here. Once you're here and got your tree fragment, head east to a burial near some mages. And there are the backhand blades. At standard infusion, they have this scaling here, but keen infusion gets S scaling while heavy only goes to A, so mostly dex, obviously. And here is the damage against the troll with 40 in all stats, and since this is the base game, this won't factor tree blessings so we get a clean comparison. Overall, these do seem on our weaker side, but they do compare, so you only have to upgrade one of these compared to having a dual sword set up in the past. But they don't get Seppuku Ash of War, so you have to rely on Bloodflame Blade for extra bleed if you're gonna go bleed. Next, another backhand blade you can farm is the Hornset Chakram Enemies. There is one near the very starting race on top of a monument. If you get lucky, you're rewarded with a unique Cursed Blade Cirque, getting B and Dex with innate bleed. And here is the Astrophor's damage. In order to do the kick, you have to press the Astrophor twice near the end. But pretty good damage. If you're going to use backhand blades, I would probably use this one over the standard one. Next up, Beast Claws. This requires killing an invader enemy, but at the starting grace, go east into the forest, and there will eventually be a naked man. Kill that pervert, and you get your Beast Claws. They have this scaling, but with heavy infusion, they get up to A in strength, so more strength based. And come with a rather broken Ash of War, Savage Claws. These unleash a fury of strikes, great for a status build. They also tend to stun lock most human enemies, meaning if they get hit once by the attack, you can usually get the full damage off without any risk. The normal moveset also covers way more ground than most small weapon types. However, normal claws are superior in the normal moveset since they're not as committed with attacks, leaving you room to dodge better or just in general, better control of where you attack rather than the beast claws, which are kind of obviously wild. But next up, the Greatsword of Solitude and the Solitude Armor Set. Get ready, Strength Chats. From the Three Grace Cross, follow this path here to the Western Nameless Mausoleum. Inside is a tough boss fight, but I found that parrying him is pretty easy, or just use my Giga Chad Strength build that I used on launch stream and guard counter him to death, easy peasy. But once beaten, you get this sword and armor set, which is super heavy. The great sword gets A strength and dex, and its ash is probably going to be really good in PvP, which does a vacuum slice that if you use an R2 afterward, follows up with a strong slash attack. Overall, pretty strong weapon with good stance damage. Next, Great Kutono. From the three cross grace, head north but stick near the wall on the left toward a small campfire that contains one of the most OP Ashes of War, the Savage Lion Claw, which is a straight up upgrade to the normal Lion's Claw. Pretty much every strength build is using this Ash of War. But once you get that, continue forward and you'll reach a lake with a big stinky dragon. But near it is the Katana. Grab it and run. Run far away. It does get DC scaling, but only goes up to B with either Heavy or Keen, and it comes with a Stance Ash of War, and here's the damage. To be honest, I actually died like three times trying to get this clip, so overall I think it's pretty average. Instead, how about you equip that Savage Lion's Claw you got and do this damage instead. Now it's a good weapon. Great range, decent stagger, solid weapon. <laughs> We'll nab the weapons on the left side of the map now, so from the three cross grace, head into the big cave to the next grace and tree fragment.
once here, turn around and take this cliff path to reach the Cliff Road Terminus Grace. Here, you can go to Prospect Town to farm the chunky uglies for their weapons. One being a colossal hammer which R2 sprays blood everywhere. However, from testing it doesn't really seem to build up bleed, so more visual than anything, but really good stance damage. And the other is the spear. Nothing too special aside having bleed, but both scale with strength and arcane mostly and can be buffed. The other weapon in this area is the patas. So from the grace, follow this long path here. Once at the church, at the ledge is the Petas. They go up to be scaling with heavy or keen, but they're fist weapons with the length of straight swords. That's right. Long fist weapons. Oh, daddy. These are really fast and the running R1 is dual poke, DS3 twinned sword flashbacks. Really cool weapons, slap bleed or status on them. You also get the Oathseeker armour set here as well, and by the statue, you get a talisman that slowly regenerates FP really strong. Now, time for the Legacy Dungeon, with only one new weapon, but you can farm a couple more from a certain enemy. We'll start with the farm first, because it's sooner. Outside of the small private altar grace, up the stairs is a strong horn set enemy. Beat him enough, and you get the Horn Warrior Sword, a unique paired curved sword with this scaling here. They come with a unique Ash of War, Horn Calling, summoning horns from the ground in an AoE, which is fairly spammable. The neat part about it, though, is that you can cast it from really far away and even go up stuff like walls, which is perfect for hitting ranged targets, or you can aim it at your feet for an AoE around you in case there's enemies nearby. So super solid weapon for a dex faith build. But the last weapon in the area is the Poison Hand. You need to unlock the gate down the well in the area to access it, but the key can be found in this location here. Once that, unlock it, proceed, and you're greeted with Miyazaki's favorite, a poison swamp. Head right to this location around here, and you get the Poison Hand Fist Weapon. Normal Fist Weapon, not hand to hand. With this primarily arcane scaling. They come with this unique Ash of War that does a strike and can poison the enemy. More notably though, they have a special inherent effect that boosts your attack whenever something is poisoned. But you can put it in your offhand to benefit from its effect whenever you poison something. Pretty nice for that utility. Now it's time to head to the right side now. The hard side. From the three cross grace, go across the bridge to the castle front grace. And let's get the perfumes first. Turn south and go to this small tent location nearby with perfume enemies. In the chest is your fire spark perfumes. Perfumes have a fixed element so these only deal fire damage. But oddly scale with dex. Little weird. No notable ash of war, but here is the general damage they deal with charred artus and the like. Do note that they do not trigger consecutive attack talismans, at least that I tested. You will gain no buffs, so each spark does not count as a multiple attacks. 
But that is the fire one. Now time for a poison one. Heading southeast from the castle front grace. The next grace is an NPC that sells you the poison bottles, a unique weapon that deals only physical damage but of course also builds up poison. These come with a unique Ash of War that spreads poison in an area and even poisons you. So a little combo you can do is using the Rot Exultation Talisman, Mushroom Head which raises your attack when something's poisoned, along with the Poison Hand we found earlier, and you go from 396 AR to 562 AR. Pretty nice boost. Next, the Smith's Crypt Daggers and Anvil, located in the same dungeon. From the Castle Front Grace, go this route to the Ruin Forge Lava Intake. The dagger location is around this area. These are quad scaling weapons, although they get S and Dex with keen scaling. But pretty simple, they're ranged weapons that have limited range, but don't consume FP, which is nice for picking off enemies somewhat out of reach, and are actually great for status buildup like Bleed. Unlike their perfumes though, they do work with consecutive damage talismans, although the Ash of War is kind of whatever, but definitely strong and a nice side weapon to have equipped if you can fit it in. For the anvil in the same place, you will need to pull a lever that lowers the big pipe down. Then, from this room, jump down onto it, and going up to the top and to the right is the anvil at the furnace, as well as an ancient stone. Nice. But it's a big hammer, big bonk. Quad scaling with mostly strength though, and come with a unique Ash of War which does a slam downwards and raises spears from the ground. A little bit weird, but the spear does linger for a bit, which can do extra damage. I would say pretty strong, giving you good stance and AoE damage. Bonk. And from here you have two more choices before the castle. One on the left and one to the right. Both require killing bosses. Both areas fairly hard. But let's do Death Knight first. At castle front, follow this path here. Once in, it is a hard trek to the boss with goblins and smashing ceilings, but once you reach this room, is where you run to run down, not get smashed, and eventually that leads to the boss. Beat him and you get the twin death knight axes, which are strength faith mainly, with a unique ash of war that does a lightning teleport into a spinning slash after hitting R2. Damage is okay, but what's cool is that you can teleport from one direction and then spin back to wherever. So you have a ton of control on the skill, which I can see it being really good in PvP, and even has potential in PvE. And yes, the Lightning Warp does have iframes, but only midway through. It does not have iframes at the start of the animation, so you have to preemptively start it to dodge anything, but really sick. Now for the right side, for the Dragon Hunter Great Katana. I'll show the route to it, but inside is pretty straightforward. You beat the guy at the end, you get the katana.
this katana scales with CC split and has a unique Ash of War, the Dragon Wound Slash. The weapon also apparently does more damage against dragons, but from my testing, it kind of did poop damage, so I don't know. It seemed to deal less damage than Grand Sack's turbo buff, but the Ash of War can be charged to send a slash from afar. Lots of pink. This is probably a Victor's weapon from Tekken 8, but pretty cool, but not that strong in my opinion for PvE. PvP, who knows, probably decent. And now it's time for the castle weapons. The first is the Light Greatsword, Milady. From Castle Front, follow this path here, just past the troll and up a ladder. As suspected, mostly dex based, but this gets one of the coolest movesets in the entire game, able to flow seamlessly between heavy and light attacks. Unfortunately, the stance Ash of War does not come with it, so you have to find it around in the same area to equip it, but that will deal this much damage. You go into the stance, then you hit R1 for the flurry, and then at the end hit R2 for the thrust combo, with a lot of potential for status buildup. For the next weapon, it's a magical glintstone greatsword gotten from beating the invader that blocks your path leading up to the boss. Low scaling on int oddly, but its Ash of War summons three magical swords, which seems like we've got this before. However, if you cast it and then hit R2, you do a special thrust forward with your blades hopefully landing as well for a really great 2.3k damage. And the last weapon for the castle is obviously from the boss. You turn in the remembrance and you get the swords. Twinned like great swords with quad scaling and the most anime Ash of War that lights up the swords into fire magic. Hitting R2 does a big fire explosion AoE that ruins visibility, <laughs> but good for clearing packs. And hitting R1 while in stance does magic beam projectiles and if you spam R1 more, you get more beams. Super flashy, but kind of all bark, no bite. I tested this against Meladia and the Frost Dragon on a mostly face setup to scale the fire damage and was super unimpressed. So just a heads up. For PvP, the magic beams might be toxic though, and you do get a crazy dual light greatsword moveset, which flows beautifully. So the swords are really cool nonetheless. And lastly, some weapons post Rolana from the High Cross Grace shortly after the boss, pick up the May the Best Wind emote and head east to the Morth Ruins. Will be an NPC. If you use the made the best win emote, it will trigger a fight. Beat him and you finally get the hand to hand fist. Dry leaf arts. CC scaling reaching A in strength with heavy infusion. They come with a cool one punch Ash of War dealing pretty good damage in a single blow. Overall, these weapons have a great moveset with more control than Beast Claws and seem to do more stance damage as well. Great new weapon type. And last route leads to three weapons in one location. Head southwest to the ruined forge of Starfall Past. In it is the Smith's Grip Throwing Spear, whose R2 can be charged and thrown from afar. Otherwise, nothing special. But continuing in, the main part to know is this second section here, where you pull a second lever. Pull the lever to lower the door. However, stay here. Once lowered, pull the lever back and quickly jump down onto the door that's raising up so you can get to the next floor, giving you access to the furnace, which gives you the Meteoric or Greatsword. 
a colossal weapon that scales with strength and arc. This thing is badass and its unique Ash of War does a super long range thrust and hitting L2 again does an AoE blast. Super spammable, I can see this being great in PvP to catch running players, but the downside is that once you commit to the lunge, you can't change the direction of the blast, and the blast AoE is not that big, so that could leave you vulnerable to attacks. But yeah, really cool sword. And the last weapon is in the same area you just did, but instead of jumping on the door, now you just lower it and go inside, and toward the end, past the golem near a waterfall is the smith's grit rings. It's like the ones from the horn guys, but with these, you can actually throw and infuse, so pretty cool. Xena warrior build, maybe. And Project forgot to include the big-ass hammer he used on stream. Farm the Dark Knight near the castle Ensis checkpoint. It comes with a cool gimmick where after a guard counter, it does a small holy AO attack very strong. And those are the best early weapons you can get early on. Again, map links will be in the pinned comment, but yeah, hopefully you guys found it useful. Sorry it's so late, but I wasn't sent a review copy until like a day before the game came out, so it is what it is. So be sure to give the video a like, it helps the video out a ton, and comment down below what weapon you found you liked the best from the new DLC. Or comment down below what builds you guys want me to do. I have the Beast Claw Adachi build in the works, I have my Counter Guard Strength Vagabond build that I played on stream, which seemed to cruise through the game really easily, um, but what else do you guys want to see? And, or what weapons should I build around? Let me know, and subscribe for more Elden Ring epicness. What? You can buff this? You can buff this Strength Faith Hammer.